This is Real Estate Co-Pilot. It doesn't matter if you're a client or an agent, I can help guide you through your real estate journey. Get ready for takeoff. Here we go, guys. We're live with the first episode of Real Estate Co-Pilot. I am your co-pilot, Josh Shives. Joining me, as always, my in-house marketing guru co-host, Nelson Pelt. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, our special guest today is Mr. Grant Thompson joining us. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and this is Real Estate Co-Pilot. Here we go. Cool. Uh, the first subject we're going to bring on today is social media in real estate. And, uh, you know, Grant brings a, a big background on that. He, he comes from a media background before real estate, and he's been actively involved in real estate now for about eight years as an agent and uh, 11 or 12 as investor side how long yeah yeah somewhere in that range uh -huh. and then nelson pelton i'll let him talk about his media side on in real estate here a little bit yeah so i i got started in media from owning a couple of small businesses in lafayette and doing all the content creation for those um shortly after that i i started um well i got my drone license and then i figured out well if i want to fly a drone i need to uh uh get a license to fly commercially yeah so um, I started looking into different ways to do that and contacted some local agents to see if they needed aerial photos and went from there. And now I'm creating content for real estate full time. There we go. I think our first project we ever worked on together was Scotty's. Is that it right? It was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then from that connection, you helped me and my wife with our own business. So yeah, and it was a good connection to make. Talk, to talk about a little bit about the drone stuff because uh, the, the exemption that you have to get in order to fly commercially. And I think commercially is defined as if you're going to do this to make money. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's the definition by the FAA. If, you, if you're using a drone to make money in any form or advertise, then, yeah, you need a commercial license to do that. Um, and there are fines that <clears throat> can occur if you don't have one and you're flying commercially. Um, but yeah, so it's essentially the same test that uh, manned pilots take at Purdue um, to get licensed to fly. And the test, it, it's about 60, or it used to be 65 questions, multiple choice, but it really leaned heavily on aeronautical charts. So reading maps and what all the symbols mean. And uh, if you've ever seen an aeronautical chart, they're not easy to read. Um, Sorry, I just fell asleep as he was talking. About that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically it's a test that you take at a accredited school, Purdue University Airport. That's the closest place mm -hmm. around here to do that. But yeah, once you get licensed, um, there's a lot of paperwork that has to get done before you can fly. But then um, after that, um, yeah, you're good to go. So anytime that I take off, I have to notify um, through a system called LANCE, which stands for low aircraft um, something or other. But any anything that flies under a certain altitude, you have to get clearance, especially um, if you're near an airport. So with Purdue University Airport being so close, anytime I take off in Tippecanoe County, I have to basically report to them that there's going to be activity in a certain area of town um, just so they know and can can report that. And then like a couple years after you did that, didn't you get a different license or some certification to do nights or something like that? Yeah. So, um, so after I started getting my feet wet into there, um, I looked into, well, how do I do night flights, which there's restrictions over. And a few years back, you had to get a secondary certificate to fly past twilight um, so I did that, and at the time, I was only one out of a 1,000 in the country that could fly at night. Um, but recently, they've changed the laws. So now, as long as you have lights on your craft that can be seen for three aeronautical miles, um, you can fly at night um, with the new test that you take at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Just for my curiosity, how far can you, the lights that we use on the drone we use every day, uh -huh. how far can you see those? Um, so they're not rated to three aeronautical okay. miles, um, so it requires extra lights than what comes stock on a drone. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously visibility comes into play, but it's funny because you know, these drones, I mean, still, it's, it's uncharted territory. You know, laws yeah. are constantly changing. The FAA is trying to figure out, you know, how to regulate this stuff. And you got a lot of guys that still continue to fly under the radar, if yeah. you will. Um, 
I'm, you know, I don't want to say I'm one of them. I'm not admitting to anything <laughs> on this official podcast or anything. But, no, I have a drone, and I, I really don't use it commercially because I'm not making money with it. Um, but I've used it for some real estate stuff, mm -hmm. you know, when you need photos of uh, of land, you know, or, or whatever. But um, it's a pretty sweet tool. I mean, back in the day, you know, you'd have to charter a plane or hire a <laughs> chopper. <laughs> so, yeah. And oh. now it's like, hey, let me pull this out of my backpack, and uh, I'm up yeah. in the air. It's pretty cool. When Winding Creek uh, was first getting developed and, and first just a couple houses out there and the lots were going and uh, the developer was a uh, – somebody I knew and I, I was 16 years old at the time and uh, I took a bucket truck out to it was actually uh, McCarty Motors but I should but the uh, um, I took a bucket truck out to Winding Creek we put it all the way in the air and that's how I did aerials originally for, <laughs> yeah it was uh it was, it was pretty fun stuff I was able to go up to about 50 feet yep, high yep. amazing yeah. now a few a few years back I was actually in an area where it's a no-fly zone which is it's in a in an area about a mile to the airport. So anywhere within the airport's proximity, it's a no-fly zone. You have to get like uh, 30 days notice if you do want to fly in there. And usually the restriction is 50 feet. So you can't fly over 50 feet from the ground. Um, so I was in a, in a situation where I needed some aerial shots and I needed them quickly and didn't have the time to do that. So I put a camera on a painter's pole, took it way up in the air, and got the photo. So that worked in that situation. No license needed. Nope. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, and you you did uh, a lot of real estate photos for a variety of agents locally. Yeah. And then and then you snagged him to work exclusively at <laughs> yeah. Rayco Realty. That's Sorry, right. everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at the time that Josh and I were discussing uh, the pot potential of me coming on full time with Rayco. I think I had uh, close to 50 agents in Tippecanoe County for almost every brokerage in town. So, yeah, I was very active. And, and back during the boom, like 2019, 2020, when the market was crazy, I was doing five shoots a day and getting them photos the next morning, mm -hmm. which was, yeah, it was tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all wanted them the same day. And they, they wanted, wanted them, them back <laughs> then yeah. within 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. They always wanted them yesterday, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds like realtors. <laughs> I just signed this listing today, but can you get me the photos in 10 minutes? That's right. <laughs> yeah. They're my photos and I want them now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not vacant either. So you need to schedule the time, figure it out, but I need them now. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I think, uh, Grant, you can probably relate to this. So anytime I get called on to go into a, a property for pictures it's always exciting you never know what you're gonna walk into <laughs> yeah yeah that does remind me so uh <laughs> well let's see we'll leave names out of this and addresses and stuff uh listing agents uh, uh the other night walked through a house in a certain subdivision out near yeah. where i live yep. and uh it was pretty wild you didn't get to go with me on this one i wish I did, you would i didn't go but you told, yeah. me, told yeah. me about it so. it was it was a house in, in a very nice subdivision um you know, that was hundreds of thousands of dollars and um, it was a hoarder house. And, you know, we've seen plenty of those as, as we flipped over the years, but typically in the nicer neighborhoods, that's kind of a rarity. And so you, you walked into this house barely. It's like there were these little pathways mm -hmm. and um, it was listed at a price point that uh, very attractive. It was very attractive. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you could get into a nice neighborhood at a reasonable price. And so when I got there, I had to park just down the street way down it was full of potential buyers their agents were there everybody was interested in this house mm -hmm. but um you walked in and again it was it was full but the overwhelming cat smell hit you immediately wow. and those are the things that you can't see in yeah. photos yeah you yep. know so when we talk about marketing and making spaces look good it's always <laughs> good to go see something in person yeah i just i just did a uh, shoot the other day or last week and um before i get there uh, I got a, a warning. There's three cats indoors and three outdoor cats that come in and out during the day. So when you get there, put your hands down to make sure none of them run out. <laughs> yeah, that's always the worst. Like, yeah. I don't want to be responsible for your pets. Yeah. Can you just lock <laughs> them up or do something with them? But So the guy I took one of my first like uh, real estate classes with ever when I was getting right after you get licensed, it's changed now how you, the, nest, the what you have to do. But whatever we had to do right after we got licensed um tim reed was the was the guy that came in and taught it it was at the local oh, court office he's yeah he's, he's fun but he uh he told a story about like one of his first showings ever a cat ran out into the road and got hit by a car oh my god <laughs> what are the odds <laughs> we're not laughing i swear 
it's just uh so he had to call that listing agent who then had to Gosh, call their client geez. and say by the way um yeah <laughs> so sorry i killed your cat yeah that's tough that's, yeah. that's a tough phone call especially yeah. like if you're I mean, communication in this business is huge. You got to over communicate mostly, but uh, you know, the, the, you're a new agent. You're probably already hesitant to to call about different things, and then you have to call and be like, "Your cat just got hit by." <laughs> yeah, but a, as a listing agent, yeah, I, I do try to advise my client like, "Hey, let's find a way to secure these pets. Whether we put them in a garage, you know, uh, or a basement, you know, an area that they can't get out, because you hate to put that responsibility on a." brand yeah. new rookie agent they don't know better especially if the carts or if the cat like does dart on a normal that's basis right. or yeah anything could happen yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I got two dogs and they're door dashers if if you open the door they're running yeah uh-huh. yeah. yeah the good news is you're surrounded by field but yeah. Yeah. they don't go far <laughs> yeah back back to that house uh so as you walked in um <laughs> went down in the basement and uh by the way there there was somebody was still living there supposedly and all that mm-hmm. filth with no Utilities. utilities on yeah there was no oh, running wow. water and so uh all the tubs were just black i don't know if it's because you know no water flowing if it was mold mildew whatever or uh i don't know where the lady that was living there was going to the bathroom to be honest she might have been crapping in the tubs <laughs> which is yeah. disgusting um because all the toilets had like trash bags over them i mean it was wild it was wild That's and we've crazy. we've seen that before i was gonna say a few years ago you 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 guys flipped a house and like the, somebody had cut a hole to the crawl space, and that was where they were. <laughs> they were d- their dumping grounds. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. One time we walked in, <laughs> and there was a house that was had about 500 Dasani water bottles in the kitchen. And when I picked one of them up, I looked, and all the bottles were filled with urine. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. That, oh, the house man. he's talking about. The, I mean, um, <laughs> most of you out there probably don't know, and maybe some of you do. But Grant Thompson and his dad have flipped a, a lot of houses over the years, and. Uh, They've got a lot of stories, and a lot of them are pretty fun, but that house right there is the only one I've ever seen you guys buy hazmat suits for. Yeah. That's true. That's true. We suited up for that one, and, uh, man, we hauled away so many loads of trash from that place, but the guy had been living in that one, according to the neighbors, for years with no utilities on it. I'm, I'm talking wow. no water, no heat, no power, yeah. and uh, he, uh, when, when my dad... I've shared this story before on Facebook, but I'll share it real quick. Uh, my dad, I remember when we bought the house, we took possession of it. Um, we bought it at the sheriff's sale, which is the final step of foreclosure here in Tippecanoe County. And uh, the guy didn't get out, and so we had to basically petition the court for a, a writ of assistance. And so the sheriff comes out at that point to escort the guy off the property. Sheriff's beating on the door. The guy's not answering. Finally, they go in, and the door would only open up about 18 inches because it was just full <laughs> of trash, you know? <laughs> And so finally the sheriff goes in, gets the guy up. He's like laying kind of strung out on a bed. And my dad calls me and he goes, I was in a real estate class at that time, but he goes, Grant, you wouldn't believe this place. He said, if a team of artists tried to recreate the scene in here, I don't know if they could. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, there's this vaulted ceiling in the kitchen and there's cobwebs hanging down all the way to my chest. And he said, in the cobwebs, there are hundreds and hundreds of live spiders. And he said, there's a, a pile of eggshells, probably a thousand eggshells just sitting on the ground. Guy had a little propane heater and he, that's how he was cooking every morning. Oh He'd crack eggshells, just throw them on the ground. And then like I mentioned, the Dasani water bottles, that's where he was peeing. But I remember going in and I'll leave it at this, but we, were, we had our hazmat suits on, we're carrying stuff out of the house. And uh, the guy had this recliner that he would sit in and me and another guy were carrying it out. And as we're doing that, there's mice scurrying out from underneath the cushions of this thing. Oh, and of course, I'm a pansy, you know. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm done. Get me out of here, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, we've, we've kind of seen it all. <laughs> seen the spectrum. So, yeah. yeah. Back to back to point, I guess, on social media. We kind of got off on a tangent there, which is great, which is fine. Um, I, I'd like to go into a little bit about, you know, Nelson, how long have you been doing photography for real estate now? So real estate photography, about five years. Okay. And then I've been in the industry like 11 and a half, 12. And Grant, you've been in the industry as an agent for... About eight years. And then and as an investor. Yeah. T- 12, 13 years. 12, 13 years. Mm-hmm. How have, in your guys' opinion, you know, I, you know I've, I've got some things that have changed. We talked about the drone. How have, how have social media changed real estate in your eyes, or, or at least what we use in, in social um, for real estate on a daily basis. Yeah, well, one of the reasons that I, I first got into real estate photography is is that um, just the listings that were active back 
um, when the time that I started, um, I thought a lot of the those pictures of the listings from me and my wife just looking at active listings during that time, um, they really didn't do the properties justice. It, it would be an agent going in, taking cell phone pictures straight down at the floor, pictures of light switches, stuff like that. Um, so I thought that that was an area <laughs> that I could explore and actually um, help with with just the agents, how they represent their properties. Because as an agent, you want to re represent your properties in the best light and also show that off to your clients that if you list with me, this is what your your listing will look like. I think you excelled at that. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so I mean, I have a background in photo too, and that was always has been, still is one of my selling points when I'm listing a property for a seller. Is you know, I'll do my own photos still, um, and you know, painting the, the the picture, you know, or the property in the best light. It, it is very important. Um, Cameras have come a long way. The iPhone, you know, it's gotten yeah. pretty good. I mean, you can do some good stuff, but I would argue it still doesn't compare to somebody who has knowledge, you know, has a professional DSLR is coming out and, you know, editing the photos. Um, but it's hard. Getting close. <laughs> I know. With it's, the iPhone. <laughs> I mean, look, the, the honest answer, too, it's it's hard, you know, selling yourself because, you know, real yeah. estate agents, they're cheap sometimes. Yeah. You yeah. know, they're earning money, they're getting commission, but they don't want to spend dollars. Yeah. But and so, but even with a cell phone, I think, that, yeah, it's a perfectly uh, good tool to use as long as you're composing your shots well. Um, because I can I can take photos with my cell phone and, and make it look like a professional photo just from the angles and, and stuff like that, the comp composition of the picture. Yeah. Well, and again, yeah, you, you have the knowledge and the expertise to do that. Um, I, I, these days, the market has been strong the last few years. For sure. And so I think you can kind of get yeah. away with, you know, I don't want to say crap photos, but everything no. seems to sell. Literally, I think we were talking back in the day um, – that you could probably just take a picture of the toilet and put it in <laughs> right. the, the listing and sell well, it. It's a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. <laughs> Here's right. a picture of the toilet. <laughs> That's right. It's uh, it's one hundred and ninety nine thousand. Yeah. yeah. Best offers by Sunday at noon. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Well, and you you do you see some of those houses where there's only one exterior photo included. Yeah. Which I always laugh at those because I'm like, what aren't you showing us? <laughs> you know, what do you what do you got right. to hide here? Why do we not see anything inside the home? And and that's the craziest part because with modern stuff. Um, you could literally make the photos fine, even if it's not like that's the um, if there is something like they just don't want to be seen or something, not that you're disguising it. But like, let's say there's this really ugly couch and they just don't want that in the photos or something like that. Like the modern day photographer can just get rid of the couch for the photographer. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's talk about the staging kind yeah. of software. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So just within the last year, um, AI and Photoshop have, have really mm. taken off now. If I take a photo of a living room and, like you said, there's an ugly couch, yeah. I can literally highlight it and hit remove, and AI removes it from the photo. Yeah, and I think people have thought for years Photoshop is that simple. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not. You know, no. normally you're cutting it out. And, you no, know, but AI hours. is helping. Uh, it's getting yeah. there. Yeah. It's it's pretty scary. You yeah. know, and these deep <laughs> fakes. You know, yeah. face swapping and even in video now, it's it's pretty wild. But what to, you can do. to virtually stage a room to actually put yeah all the furnishings in the room, AI is not there yet. So I I have some other software that I use to virtually stage. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, I can see it working. But right now, yeah, you'll get some weird looking stuff <laughs> yeah we we recently did or at least first to my knowledge um at rico you recently did the first virtually staged video we've ever done Is that yeah right? so that was a new tool that i was uh -huh. testing out i don't know if you saw it no Grant, but um yeah literally so with with modern cell phones these days there's a lot of tools and technology built in so the modern iphone has what's called lidar you guys familiar with lidar that's yeah, the that's focusing system isn't it's it it's using later lasers to uh -huh. measure distance to mm -hmm. objects so i go in with my cell phone using lidar and just it literally took me five minutes to walk the property um and this was like a big like five thousand square foot home with a full basement um, so I walked the property in five minutes, and it was a new construction, so it wasn't furnished or anything like that. And then I sent it um, through the, the program, and it takes all those measurements, makes a virtual layout of the, of the home, and it was getting it accurate to the type of tile they were using on the wall. It was pretty cool. Um, and, and, yeah, what the cabinets, the actual wood grain on the cabinets. 
Um, and then it fully furnished this house and the, the walkthrough video, um, when I got it back, it was, it was beautiful. It was perfect. It was <laughs> awesome. Now you can tell, like, if you, if you're really paying attention to the video, you can tell some of it's like digital and not like, yeah, just a little a g- glitchy, if you it's will. Not, at it's times. not, it's not really glitchy okay. at all. No. You can just like, if you just like really study it, you can tell like, Oh, you know, that's, that's very like a, that's a digital a little pic- surreal. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, versus okay. uh, if you, if you've watched any of those home shows on HGTV and stuff where they do like a, a digital rendering and walkthrough of what yeah. they can do with the property. It, it looked like that. It was cool. Yeah. You'll have to check it out. It's a, uh, you used your iPhone yeah. to record but, it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That is pretty cool. And so, um, and, and it inserted, this was a vacant home, you said? It was yes, a brand new, new construction. construction. And so the, the final produced video then yeah. had what in there? Furniture? Yep, the whole house. And, everything. and the, the one Even reason like I did it, I was... appliances well, and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 so it had... Uh, <laughs> it okay, crazy. I got thoughts on that, but, but yeah. Okay. But, um, but the reason that I tried out this, this new program was because I got there, I was going to do a full video walkthrough. Um, but they're putting in the refrigerator. There's a cleaning lady there, and and by doing it virtually, I could still get all the dimensions of the room, and then that wouldn't be in the shots. Uh huh. And and so did you send this off then, like it was a 24 hour service? Yeah. So it, with that, it's four. It was 48 hour. Okay. Um, but I was super impressed with the amount of detail that it produced. You'll have to watch it, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. This was a this is a very custom ask from a. I mean, from a. a, a yeah. A builder that we have a good relationship. Yeah. I mean, we can say I guess it, from Malacca. It was Malacca's home. It was correct? A, yeah. yeah one and, of their uh, okay, so new construction, brand yeah. new. Yeah. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. Because yeah. that's that's what you know where where it gets into little. Uh, iffy territory is how far are we going with this you know because because you know photos i want to show off the house and the space Mm -hmm. sort of as it is um yeah you want an accurate representation this specific case we'd never done it um the virtually staged video but the the you know the builder wanted to be able to showcase this home in the future for other people yeah and it works well, yeah. and that's for, genius. Yeah, yeah just yeah. a mod, a model, and a layout of yeah. what this spec home looks like. What it could be. Um, yeah. yeah, I think in that in that case, it's useful. I would never use it for a for an active yeah. listing. Because yeah, because I mean, we've we've probably all walked in where they have done some of that staging stuff uh-huh. where there's like nice furniture in there, and yeah. then you walk you in get there. and the house is empty, and you're like, "What happened to all the furniture? This place get robbed." Uh-huh. <laughs> or I've, I, I like the ones where people have like digitally enhanced the grass. So it's like a beautiful green yard. I've, and done, then, I've done that before. And then, yeah. and then, but then you walk You've up. You've been looking at Grant's photos. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, back in the day, and it's been a long time since I've done listing photos for anyone. That was years ago. But um, builders did it for a couple of them, like you said, where the yard was going in in three days. They didn't yeah. have grass. Yeah, we I've went done ahead that too. and added it to the listing. I would only do that for new construction homes, though, but yeah. not, not a not Yeah, a I'm talking yeah. about like when you see a digitally enhanced grass on a like 20-year-old house, and then you get to the house, and it's like all brown and pitted. <laughs> That's and, right. Yeah. Beautiful sod, and then it's just dirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it happens. Yeah. So, um, and I get asked by agents all the time, like, can you Photoshop this out? Um, and I'm like, as long as it's going to be fixed during the time that you're going to list the house, I'm not going to, yeah, show it off as something that it isn't. Yeah. I definitely think an accurate representation is good. Now, there's things that we do, or you do, and or, or we do as a company, or, or try to do, um, that make it look better. I'll say that. Uh, sure. But it's still an accurate representation of the yeah. house. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I had a, one the other day that there was a little bit of. Uh, mildew and i knew it was getting ready to be power wash but it hadn't been done yet when no. i did my photos and so i i removed it in the cellar <laughs> she actually goes hey the house looks really good did you photoshop out that green crap on the side and i'm like yes i did yeah. <laughs> now get it clean because that's, that's when it right. goes live that's the right power washer get it gets to work <laughs> yep so yeah i mean so I guess those are just a few things of, you know, like when I first started in real estate, we took all of our own pictures, basically. Hiring photography was not a thing at all. Um, we tried to use, like, I, I started on a, a team and, you know, the, our team had a camera. It was like, a, I, I couldn't tell you what it was, but it was a Canon or something like that, DSLR. and That nobody knew how to use. Yeah, I mean, there's no training. It was right. like, here's your ca- here's the camera, go take the, go right. get your listing shots. And, and yeah. uh, that's, so we've evolved from, you know, just figure it out to, to I would say I would say the vast ma- majority of listings in our area are, are doing professional photos at this point sorry guys <laughs> yeah yeah 
Well, the, the, the no, good agents good. who know the yeah. power, understand the power of marketing, you know, are, are using uh, someone. Yeah, I, I feel they, like they don't have to. I mean, by all means, if they can do it themselves and they know how to do it and and can get good photos, that's fine too. But I would say it's a true. lot of them are, are yeah. doing professional photos anymore. Yeah, yeah. And just take that's the time fair. and date stamp off your images <laughs> first. <laughs> Gosh, I know it's like, did you shoot these on your Polaroid Dis- <laughs> disposable camera? It looks so cheap. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. I mean, the photos were, were game changers in my mind when we went to professional. Uh, just the look and the, the more uniform and the, the consistency of a quality product. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that the same thing when we started doing video. And video has been overraged for the past couple years. Uh, but it, it, in today's world, we might see better. You know, video was, was the top of the game. That's what you wanted to do. But now on today's, we might see better reaction on a photo. Is that correct? Yeah, so um, from... From taking over the Facebook page and just looking at the results of, of how different types of posts do, um, there was a certain time when video did amazing. Yeah, video is what got you the most clicks to your page. Um, currently, what I've found out is just straight photos without any type of text or imagery, so not anything that's like a graphic, but an actual photograph. Um, does the best it has the best response and I don't know what why that is but I think yeah just the algorithm it prefers to show a photo over any type of yeah, digital marketing or or specific graphics um, so yeah straight photos do best I was looking listen to a different podcast uh, a couple weeks ago and and I have no idea you would know but way better than me um, for those of you that don't know me out there I don't do any of the social stuff for, for anything. That's all Nelson. Um, but uh, I, the podcast said that if, if you can see the person's eyes in a, in a steel, still photo, that it's f- typical to get better reaction than just like a house. Is that true? So like if we put an agent like standing in front of a house where you can see their face, is it going to get more clicks than just a still? I think it will if, if they were actually in the photo when it was taken. Um, AI is getting so good that yeah. it can recognize a Photoshopped image if you put in – or, or if it's a graphic, like I said, if you take the photo and then add a photo of the agent to that yeah. and post it, it's not going to do as well as an actual organic photograph where they were there in the photo. But yes, um, mm-hmm. I think it's because Facebook's algorithm is set to show people what they prefer to see, which is interactions with people. And so, yeah, if you're posting just a selfie, it's going to do way better than any other type of post interesting i didn't uh yeah really know any of that so um it depends what's in the photos mm-hmm. you're posting yep um that matters whether yeah. it's shown to your friends or not yeah and when what's he says actually face- in the photos when he says facebook it's more more meta i think it's instagram yeah and it's all both, of those right? yeah, yeah. all of those mm-hmm. um yeah when i when i ran ads about um Five years ago, Facebook actually had a text limiter. So if you wanted to run an ad on Facebook, it couldn't um, have over 25% text. And if it did, the photo that you're actually posting, if it had over 25% of the image covered with text, it would limit that post so it wouldn't Mm. show to as many people. Interesting. But That's all uh, above me. (laughs) Oh, so I have Nelson here to help me with everything. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I, obviously Facebook, Instagram, they have become huge parts of, of marketing um, over the over the past several years. Um, recently, we've, you know, we've done some YouTube. Uh, yep. We've done some TikTok. Um, I find that uh, me as an individual, I find that LinkedIn is, is good for me to connect with some people uh, when I'm trying to specifically find certain people and connect with different things. Um but but as far as a company wise, I don't I don't know how LinkedIn does, but the uh, individual wise, I think it yeah. does pretty well. I think just from a standpoint of of local marketing, Facebook is still the best social media platform to get your content out locally. Um, with that and LinkedIn with connections of uh, other business owners in town. Whereas if you're if you're making posts on Instagram and TikTok, it's going to be shown to a much wider audience that might not even be um, specific to who you're trying to target. Mm -hmm. Tell me the difference between a a TikTok reel, Instagram reel, Facebook story, Facebook reel. What's all that? So they're vertical videos, which, uh, yeah, basically 
um, vertically shot on a cell phone, so they're they're tall instead of wide. Um, and those vote those videos are just like a minute long, so they're all pretty much the same thing, just called different things. So are, like, there, are there limits that the yeah they can't be over puts a in place a minute or whatever. And typically, though, like unless it, unless we have a real strong hook on a video, right. you know, ten seconds is probably what we get the view on. Yeah. So, um, I guess with Instagram, so you have you have reels and you have stories. They're going to perform best if they're shot vertically, um, but the difference is a story goes onto your your main page, mm. and it's visible for twenty four hours and then it goes away. Okay. So those are things that you would want to post just daily updates and stuff like that. Whereas if you post a reel, it's going to be shown just like a a post on your Facebook wall where it's permanent. It stays there. You can look at it anytime, um, and it goes out to kind of a broader audience over time. Yeah, I I use Facebook, um, Instagram. It's funny I've created an account, but I haven't done much with it. You can link them; it'll just be one of the same. Yeah, yeah. Post yeah it's cross here. post. Yeah, I I think though, in general terms, I mean, it, these are great tools uh, that are free. Mm-hmm. You know, and yes, um, for sure, you need to get some of our other agents on here. I'm thinking like Becky Gibson's, who are pros at just posting content. You know, utilizing the platform. Um, it's something that I know is there. You know, but I largely use Facebook for posting memes, you know, <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid, funny stuff. Or um, making fun of people. I've seen that where you make fun of an inspector here in town. All, all the updates all oh, to your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and my buddy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Some quality work. We post shoddy remodeling work and <laughs> all, say, all is casual jokes. Though, yeah, that's so. right. That's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it's it's free. Uh, we're not talking about the sponsored ads here. We're not talking about Google ads. We're talking about the free stuff that simply just posting, staying in front of your audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, is really key and I it takes time it takes effort mm-hmm. <laughs> something that you know it's just uh, I, I look back on sometimes in hindsight I'm like oh man I had a couple closings last week I didn't post a photo I didn't do this you know and I should have and I I need to do better with that but um, it's it's worth it I think you know people see just that you're doing business For sure you know you, you, whether whether they think you're an expert or not if they just see Oh, hey, Josh Shives, yeah, he's still in the real estate game. It's amazing how people will call you or think of you when they need you. To, to old school marketing is, you know, they needed to see you in, in in three different forms within like a week period. So like maybe that was print, online, and a billboard, and they saw all three within a week to really grasp you. I think that's changed a lot um, because I think now it's it's more social-based. Yeah, you may, maybe you do have a, a billboard and they do see that, which is great, but... They might see you five times in different Facebook things over the over a day period, and mm-hmm. it's so I think that the three different medias thing has changed. I think you can hook people or, or get people to at least engage with you um, just through the social at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, you talked a, a second ago. You said something about Google ads. You know, I think that's been a game changer in real estate a little bit too because. You know, a couple years ago, Google launched Google Screened, and Google Screened is. You know, if you if you put your name in and, and you look up real estate agents in Lafayette, Indiana, people will pop up and they'll be Google screen. That's that's uh, just it. I mean, it's an ad. That's what people are paying for. Um, you know, but people trust Google and they're like, oh, Google screen this person. But so all they did was rebrand from, a, you know, sponsored ad to Google screened and it's it's pay to play. Yeah. Uh, now, I think that they do verify like your license and stuff. So. When they say screened, you know they're making sure you're a real person and a, a licensed agent. But it's it's a pay to play platform. Mm. Doesn't mean that you're excellent at what you do. No, I mean I, I'd rely heavily more on reviews and stuff yeah. than than the screened check mark. But there's nothing against that. I mean everybody does different paid ads and different stuff. And the more you can pop up, the better. But I just mm-hmm. think it's been a game changer as well because people automatically say, oh well, Google Google likes this person. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. When you mentioned reviews, I mean that that is important. We're always yeah. pushing yeah, our yeah. agents to yeah. seek reviews, right? I think yeah, the Google screen it's a, it's a useful tool. Um, it is a paid subscription where you're paying to basically be the most relevant search result. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there's benefits to it, but um, yeah, back in the day, I know there'd be a lot of businesses that would put their name as something that would show up at the top of the alphabet. Um, because it was all alphabetically arranged, but nowadays <laughs> I don't think the same is true. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying they'd change their name or what? 
Well, they'd come up with business names that oh. were oh yeah like at the top of the phone book, right? <laughs> yeah. So you, you flip to A, and you're gonna find uh, their AAA business. Realty yeah, Service. See? <laughs> yeah, there you go. A A A. The uh, the Google's way smarter on the searches than it was at that point in the game, though. But yeah, I don't know. it's it's a good tool. Um, I think that there's a lot of benefit to it, but just another tool. So mm-hmm. well, and I, I'm reminded constantly too. I mentioned you know staying in front of people. You have to, or else they'll forget about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they'll go yeah. elsewhere. They will. They will. I mean, how many times have we seen, you know, somebody that is a friend? We we think we're maybe closer than we really are, uh, or a family member. I mean, I yeah. remember. I'm pretty sure, like my uncle uh, bought a house a while back. This was years ago, and I was newly licensed. But he bought a house uh, with another agent, and I was like, hey. Uncle such and such. Why, why didn't you call me? And like, oh yeah, you know. Well, didn't I just, think about it. Yeah, I've always worked with this person, and it's yeah. like, oh shoot, yeah. you know. So, I think that is happens. a that is a hard subject. And uh, well, you know, I try to do some one on ones with with all the agents uh, at Reiko and as much as they want or as often as they want. And you know, some of the newer agents, I, I've touched this subject. It is hard in the beginning of your career to realize the people and family members, and some of your family members, some of your friends, they won't use you. And that's just part of it, yeah. and uh, it's it's a hard thing to get past in your mind. You're like, Whoa. but uh, but it, it's the come to the come to Jesus moment on that is like it doesn't matter. You just move on, or at least that's what I tell them. Like if they're not if they're gonna use you, they're gonna use you. If they're not, they're not. But the best thing you can do is you can at least get them talking about you. So if even if they're not gonna use you, but if you can just get them talking about you to all their other people, then still a win. That's true. That's true, and we've seen that before. Where yeah, they're, they're they're talking about the services that you offer, and they didn't necessarily use you on a yeah. particular transaction. So, yeah. so move on from the my feelings are hurt, and just start pumping them full of information that they can talk to uh, you know twenty of their friends about, and then that's twenty of their friends that now he you know he's promoted you to or or she or whoever it is. And so uh, it is it's a really hard thing to get over that your your family or your friend mm-hmm. didn't use you. Um, but it happens. Uh, it happens all the time. And but I think the the bigger win is if you can just get them talking about you. Mm-hmm. Well, in this business too, I think you have to develop thick skin because if you're overly sensitive, your feelings get hurt easily. Mm-hmm. You're probably not cut out for this business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's there's conflict uh, daily. You know, with um, you know other realtors, you're basically just dealing uh, with adversity. You know, you're having to put out fires. I think the misconception too we talk about a lot is people think agents just go around and look at pretty houses and show them to prospective buyers and you know fill out a few blanks on a purchase agreement and then show up and collect their check and that couldn't be further from the truth. Right, and uh, even you know those are the the easy task is to show up and show the house and it's true. But the other thing that people don't realize is. Like, oh, it's so easy, it's so easy, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's well, The behind-the-scenes stuff is not easy, like Grant just said. But even, like, you want to see, you know, it's, it's slowed down a little bit, but, but the past two years or three years or whatever, you know, I want to see this house. Well, we have to see it tonight. Well, my do- like, me as a parent and you as a parent, and, like, maybe, like, my daughter might have a choir concert or something like that, and, it, you know, it's, and we have to go at the same time. Or So, like, you're, you're giving up personal time. Um, to make those clients happy and, and to get them in the house because if you didn't get them in the house right then, it was gone. Yeah, or they're going to call another agent who, or they're who will call, get them who in. Who will the get them in. So. Yeah. And I, I've had um, people over the years that come to me and say, Hey, I'm thinking about getting my real estate license. Can I pick your brain, ask you some questions? And I remember I had a, a lady a couple years ago, her and her husband said, Hey, can we take you to dinner? And so I sat down and I said, so why? why yeah, I like steakhouses. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or Ruth's Chris, St. Elmo, anywhere in Indy. I know we have to drive an hour, but. We can talk all the way. That's right. I'll answer whatever <laughs> questions you want. <laughs> so, uh, but I remember we sat down and I said, so why do you want to go into real estate? And she goes, well, I just love the idea of the f- flexibility, you know, getting to work on my own schedule. And I said, let me stop you right there. And I said, this was, you know, when the market was real hot, you know, yep. interest rates were low like two years ago. I said, when a, a listing, when a property hits the market, when do you think that buyer wants to go look at that house? Yesterday. I mean, they want to yeah, go right yeah. now. You're you know? on everyone else's schedule, not your That's own. Right. That's, That's right. That's right. And they, I mean, they don't care if you're getting ready to give your kid a bath. Yeah. They want to go look at the house right now because, like you said, if you don't, the thing's gone. I have a fun story about scheduling. And so when uh, I think my wife was, she was pregnant. I think it was our first. So she just turned seven. So this was like, you know, seven and a half years ago or something like that. I had a new construction client, and he worked second shift somewhere here in town. 
he would get off work at least three times a week. He would go look at the house at like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, and he would call me with his update. And my wife was so pissed off every time that phone <laughs> rang. <laughs> and that's the exact mentality of you work on their schedule. And that was an extreme example. Um, you know, we, that client and I had some discussion about, and he's like, well, you don't have to answer. I'll just leave it as a voicemail. And it's like, <laughs> I woke up, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my phone was ringing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like it, it, and it was fine. It, it worked out, but like, yeah, I, that's an extreme example, but yes, you always work on their schedules. Well, it, if you say extreme, I had a guy that just the other night, two nights ago, it was a new perspective, you know, buyer. And he was, he was sending me a million texts. It was one fifteen in the morning. And I'm just like, dude, I, I'm not, you got to set some boundaries. You do in the beginning, you know? Cause like, I actually, I think I was awake. I was having a hard time sleeping the other night. And I thought about texting him back, but I was like, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not setting the standard. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I am not gonna show you that I'm willing to respond at 1.15 in the morning. It ain't gonna happen, so. Now, there's been nights where I stay up and work real late or mornings I get up and work early, and I will respond. Like, I'll try to crank through as many emails and stuff e- as I can. Emails are a little different. Or yeah. text. Well, I don't, I don't, I won't text people that not that, that late, but if I can email them and respond and get all those emails and then I'm like, I do that like at, at one in the morning or, or four in the morning or five in the morning to, to get them all done as fast as I can and not have to do a response. And then so every once in a while you'll get a response at that time. And I'm like, <laughs> Dang it, they're up too. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Backfired. Yeah. And so then I'm like, Oh man, but yeah. Yeah, you do what you can when you can. So uh, I, I've, that's that's something I've learned um, as my but schedule yeah, gets busier. I think and busier. that's a big misconception that you're working your own schedule and you're a realtor. Well, yeah. again, if you want to earn, you want to make Correct. money, you want to thrive in this business, you got to be willing to put in the time. You know, it's it's just like a lot of people jump into sales positions. You know, they go. Um, actually, my my brother is, uh, you know, he runs the day to day. It's uh, family owned car dealership and there was another dealer in town that was recruiting him and they said hey come over here be one of the finance managers you'll make $110,000 a year I think is kind of the number they threw out and he's like wow that's that's pretty good you know that's more than I'm earning now and you know he was he was really considering it and uh, my dad who has a lot of experience in the car business used to work for a big dealer and then has done his own thing for 30 plus years he kind of sat down with my brother and just said hey you know they're, they're gonna work you to death like you to earn that hundred and ten thousand dollars, like mm-hmm. you're gonna be there into the evening yeah. doing deals, staying late. You know when the customers like, oh hey, sorry, mm-hmm. I got off work late. I know you close at seven, but I'll be there at seven thirty. But if you want that sale, you're gonna stick around. Yeah. You're gonna do yeah. the paperwork. And the expectation is that you stick around. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The sales manager saying, hey dummy, you know yeah. why, why'd you leave early yeah. tonight? Yeah. So. Um, that's that's sales, you know, and we are in, in the sales business, if you will. We're in the people business, and you try to accommodate people as much as you can. Um, but it's it's always hard, you know, when somebody is unreasonable. We sure. probably had clients like that, you know, over the years. Mm-hmm. I've been pretty fortunate. You know, most people are pretty good to work with. But sometimes if, if I sense that someone is just never going to be happy, you almost have to make that decision, you know, do you cut them loose? Or yep. it, it's a tough call. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, you know, you can, and you can do, you can cordially cut, I mean, as, as best as you can, you can cordially cut a client loose. If it, you know, it's obviously not working. And I think it's best if, if you, if we part ways and you find another agent, I, I can even help you find another agent. Maybe that jives better with your personality, but I just don't think we work together well. And uh, yeah. that, it's a tough conversation, but it's a conversation that should happen. Mm-hmm. And that it could be personality. Another example of that is, you know, you, you get a buyer who's just a, uh, Oh, like a looky loo, you know, wants to go see properties. And it's like, after I've shown you three, four, five, <laughs> ten houses, yeah. and you're not wanting to pull the trigger on anything, yeah. even though they meet your criteria, they're Just within your budget. You kicking know. the tires. That's right. Tire <laughs> kickers. Yeah. yeah. Those are those are tough ones as agents. You know, you you want to provide excellent service and um, you know, you want to be patient. Uh, and and I'm one who I'm never gonna push you. You know, I'm going to give you an honest opinion. I'm going to tell you, okay, this is priced right. This is going to sell. You know, here's what I think about the condition of the property. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to say, sign this document or else. You know, that's not my style. Um, but if if we are coming across good properties that fit the bill, if you will, and you're saying no over and over, that, that's a tough one as an agent, I think. The the clear cut, I'm going to tell you my opinion on what it's worth and what stuff like that. Uh, I think we had this conversation a couple years ago. Going back to the, the craziness market, like, 
we were having, or you, or may, maybe more specifically, and some of the other agents at Rico, uh, were having conversations with with their clients, saying, "No, I don't believe this house is worth this, but this is what you have to pay for it if you want it," which is crazy, right? Well, we talk about that all the time. You know, a, a property is worth what a buyer is willing to give yeah. at any given moment. You know, and you said, I can never remember the quote. You've said it so well. That, you know, I had some clients buying a house. Gosh, what was that? Six months ago. And I felt like they were having to overpay uh, in order to get in it, but they they wanted a house, they wanted this house. <laughs> I think the quote you were saying was, "You never overpay for real estate; you just pay too early." Yes, yes, and that that sums it up very well because we feel that here in Tippecanoe County, year after year, the market continues to trend upwards. We don't necessarily think that uh, that's stopped; maybe it's plateaued uh, at the moment due to interest rates. Yeah. But we think that the market's going to continue to go up. We think that people are going to continue to move here. There's going to be a demand for housing, yeah. which drives prices up. And um, it's it's a good thing, you know, overall. Yeah, I mean, the moral of the story is typically New County continues to grow right. and, and, and grows well. We bring in employers and we're already, even though, you know, the outside perspective, if you watch the news and watch all this is, you know, the real estate's down but it's not generally like not it's, here it's not here it's it's just genuinely not like prices on our level you know continue to climb a little bit um we continue to bring new people to the community and we don't have enough houses as it is so mm -hmm. uh, you know they're putting up apartments left and right which is good we need that too we need housing of, of all kinds but like it, it's just it's just to, like I just don't understand how it could decline, and that's my opinion. Is right. If you keep pumping people into an area where you don't have enough houses, uh, it has to climb. Yeah. Well, and I, I think what proves that again is interest rates have have been higher than they've been in the last you know quite a few years. We haven't seen a dip in values, and I thought that that would be the case. Mm -hmm. But we're pretty insulated here um, in Central Indiana. We're a pretty well run state. Of course, we have low property taxes, and like you said, we have jobs. That's the big driver here. Um, but the builders, I mean, they can't build houses fast enough. No. You know, we need... Property taxes keep climbing with those. Too. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. Everybody's up in arms. <laughs> yeah. Property taxes are, you know, a, a funny thing, though, because yeah. when you look at your assessed value and you compare that to market value, what it's actually worth, yeah. it's very hard to dispute that. You I, know? Agree. Yeah, I agree. Because it's like, the time, yeah. I look at, oh, my property taxes have jumped 30%, you know, over the last yeah. three, four, five years. But when you look at that assessed value and it's like, well, if I sold it, it's still worth $200,000 more than the assessed value. So I don't have a leg to stand on. I couldn't yeah. appeal this and win. Yeah. Um, so it is what it is. But I, I think you have to keep in perspective, too. Keep in mind other parts of the country. You know, you go to Illinois. Right. You go to California. You go to New York. I yeah. mean, they're paying triple or more what we pay in property taxes. Yeah. So. yeah. They, for sure. For the same size house and same. same. Um, yeah. It is. it is. We're, we're pretty lucky here on that aspect. I was just saying. I we, so. we have seen some substantial increases, I would say, in the past few years. But that's just trying to keep up with the market because the market yep. was uh, had seen those increases as well. Yeah. Well, and I, again, I, I don't know how much we want to elaborate. I, I do feel bad. I mean, for the first time home buyer that says, hey, I, my wages haven't increased that much, but the housing market continues to go up. You know, I can't hardly afford this. Um, or they, they can't afford the house uh, that they really want, you know, and they're either having to settle or just kind of bow out of the market mm -hmm. and remain a renter. But that's a tough one, too, because rental rates, we know we have rentals yeah, that are they high. Keep, they keep going up, too. They go up. Yeah. Right. So I, I get it. It's tough out there, and I don't know what the long-term solution is for affordable housing. That's always a big topic, you know, here in the state of Indiana and nationwide. Sure. And, again, I don't, I don't know what the solution is, you know, for the guy that's making – 17, 18 bucks an hour, you know, working on the line at a factory, pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, especially, I mean, we put out a chart a couple weeks ago, a month ago or whatever, and we were just showing the buying power of like the same, like, you, so if you, if your loan amount was X and it was at like all the different rates um, that we've seen in the past like year, and it goes from like, or two years maybe, it goes from like 5 to 8 right? Yeah, what your purchasing power is, yeah. mm -hmm. and, you depending know, on the interest rate. The purchasing power, drastic. I mean, when we look at an eight, which was kind of the top end, and in, in, mm -hmm. in, a few in, months ago, in, yeah. and we look at what the like you know like two years ago was, that purchasing power is insanely different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're paying potentially you know a thousand dollars more in interest <laughs> yeah. to the bank. Mm -hmm. A month. Uh, yeah, a month. Just in interest. Yeah, it, it uh, limits what you can buy. So, you know, I feel for people. I mean, the, again, the plus side is 
market continues to increase so that if you do buy a home, you stay in the home, you're going to reap the benefits when you do sell it one day. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's always what, you know, I try to encourage people with. And then hopefully too, you know, if you buy right now and the rates are a little higher, you can refi in a few years if they fall. So. Yeah. And we've seen that trend down. And um, my opinion is that they're going to continue to trend down all year. Uh, there, I mean, there's factors that can change that, but overall, uh, the people that are paid way more money than I'll ever make in my life to, to evaluate this stuff all pretty much agree that we're going to see trending down rates. So that's a, that's an opinion, but uh, I, I think we're, we're going to, hopefully we see, you know, five and a half or so by, as an average by the end of the year. But I think that, I so. uh, you know, I went to a, a conference not too long ago and the housing wire guy was there and he's, he was saying something about, uh, you know, if unemployment went over 300,000, then we could even theoretically see full high fours. And I, I, that was kind of a shock factor. I, I didn't think we'd see fours, but, um, and you know, a lot of people, uh, that, that's not a great situation either. If, if, but if that were to rise to get to a 4% interest rate, but yeah. I don't know, but I think that we'll see five, five and a half or five and a half by the end of the year. Again, that's just an opinion of mine, but I think we're going to go that direction. I hope so. Cause I mean, we're, we're buyers too. Yeah, you know, we're always looking at investment opportunities. We're looking to buy rentals and flips, and it just really limits what you can do your your, your cash flow. Um, you know, when you're looking at a rental, and it's like, okay, this this cap rate, this rate of return, you know, is eight uh, percent on this property, and I got to borrow close to that. It's like I can't make any money. But wah, wah. Yeah, by the time I pay the taxes and the insurance, and then you know, factor in vacancy and all that, it's just. And, and really the craziest hard. part of that is investors were still buying at those, and that's that's another reason why you've seen rents tick up so much because it's. They, yeah, they're trying to get a yeah, return. They have to. They have to get a return that the bank is comfortable lending at, and it's mm -hmm. to get to that return, the rents have to be X. So it, it's. At, when you're at it's just all factors together it's hard mm -hmm. true the uh i think the last thing we were going to talk about on social media is here to get back on topic is is the, all the facebook and uh groups out there that you know these masterminds and um you know i, I don't want to name any of them by names but they're they're all there's tons of them out there they're all discussion ones uh grant you brought up an interesting thing recently which we've we've all we all think is interesting but you want to share that Oh, yeah. So I joined a group just like a week ago and I see all these agents, you know, from different walks of life, different brokerages. Some have been in the business, you know, a few months, a few years. Some are real pros, veterans. And um, these groups now on Facebook allow you to post anonymously, which I think is hilarious it's crazy. because, yeah, <laughs> yeah, people, people, you talk, you thought social media was bad before. Oh, my gosh. Talk about go. posting your true feelings <laughs> and opinions. Goodness. Yeah. Wow. It, it, true. And, uh, you know, Grant and I are both members of of the uh, Association of Realtors, local, Indi lo local, state, national. You know, and there's there's rules on what we can post about other agents and not. But you know, some of these anonymous posts are, are I would say, playing in the gray on some of those rules, and which is maybe why they're posting anonymously, I guess. But it's just it's interesting to watch some of those. I think so, because yeah, I mean, some of them are you know sort of uh, saying some disparaging remarks, you know, about a fellow broker. Now, some of them are legitimately saying, hey, you know. I'm an agent at such and such brokerage, you know, in Iowa, wherever, and my managing broker, they're part of this Facebook group too. So I don't want them to see this or, you know, a competing broker at another brokerage. I'm doing a deal with them right now. I don't want them to see this. So that's all fine. I just think it's, it's kind of funny. It's social media, you know, it's like mm -hmm. we have it, we want to post opinions and now it's kind of just like a, um, it's like a forum or like a Reddit, you know, sub chat where you can kind of yeah. just hide behind anonymity, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's there's so many of them anymore too. Like, like I feel like we you know three four years ago there was like three that were pretty popular, and now there's probably hundreds um, of the, all these different ones. And everyone's an expert, and everyone gives you opinion. And it's like uh, I don't know, I don't even know how you weed through them anymore. But it is true, I know. So they've been popping up, you know, in the algorithm because I just joined, you know, a week or two ago, and so I'm seeing a lot of these posts and. I probably should just like unfollow or delete the group because <laughs> yeah. it's a time sucker, you know, because you, you, you start reading mm -hmm. what they're posting. And sometimes I'll have, you know, an opinion and I'll chime in. And yeah. I've seen Becky Gibson comment on a few things, too. And um, people are just um, <laughs> they post, I mean, some ridiculous stuff in there. I agree. You know, like, yeah. like some of the questions are, are, are dumb. You know, some of them it's like, 
I don't know what state law says, you know, in California when it comes to, you know, it's or they'll ask like legal questions. So you let's know. ask a nationwide group of realtors. That's right. It's like a bunch of <laughs> armchair experts, you know. I'm gonna ask nationwide realtors like, go talk to an attorney. This is beyond, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, or talk to your broker at least. At like least your, your managing yeah, broker. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. And then so. figure, let's figure it out from there. But, yeah. But 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 social media in general, I just think it's just funny how people go on there and like, I'm gonna ask you know other mm-hmm. people's opinion. You're gonna get. Yeah. A across the board here you know well it takes a lot for me to join a group um because of that reason there's a lot of just crazy responses and yeah. replies that go on where most of it these days are just yeah it's just spam going on in those yeah groups. I, and a little bit about the spam i guess in my opinion is also when somebody somebody might ask you get in these groups and somebody might ask a really good question and maybe that question involves some sort of down side of where they're at right now but they're just trying to find an answer or get opinion and and like it instantly becomes you know 20 people answering well you should just join this brokerage join this brokerage like i, th- yeah. I see that all the time mm-hmm. yeah i don't know you yeah see, you see that yeah yeah i mean I, I i think so you know i saw like a post i think it was this morning you know like i'm unhappy with my current brokerage and somebody said i've got another place lined up you know and they they want yeah. other people to like comfort them or you made the right decision. <laughs> I'm going to just, I'm just going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to blatantly try to recruit you. I've known nothing about you other than that. You're unhappy where you are, but like here, join my brokerage. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Yeah. yeah. I see a lot of people posting links yet yeah, to their brokerage or, or lenders chiming in on these mastermind groups, you know, mm-hmm. saying, Hey, use me for financing. And it's just kind of a bunch yeah. of sales guys jumping into these groups too. So it, Facebook's is, is funny. I don't know. The older I get, the, the, the more I lose interest, you know, and, and that's largely, uh, I don't know. I'm just becoming an old timer or what, but, um, except you know, for the memes, he'll never lose interest. Yeah, in that's right. I have a sense of humor. So, um, I think that there's just too much drama at times, you know, not just in these real estate groups, but in general, you know, I mean, you think about the, the individual, we all know someone who's, you yeah. know, talking about their problems in life, you know, the woe is me. And it's like, no one cares. <laughs> I, I hate to be, on, you know, just 100% honest. It's like, okay, so you're on your fourth marriage. Well, you know, you you made some terrible decisions along the way. You did this to yourself. You and know, whatever but, but the case why are, But why are you putting that out for everyone to know? That's anyways? right. It's like, you know, stuff happens in life and that's fine. But like, yeah, I agree. Like, don't get on Facebook and be like, pity party me about it. And, uh, that's right. The yeah. victim mentality. Yeah, or yeah. again, you're just like airing your dirty laundry. Yeah. I just... I just kind of laugh at that stuff. I don't have time for that. Yeah. Yeah. Share that with Chat GPT. They'll get you through it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll give you all that, the answers. <laughs> Chat GPT is pretty wild because yeah. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him out here. I think it was <laughs> I think it was Spencer Spencer Childers here locally, who's a, an awesome agent. He uh, there was a house a while back that was um, it was like in need of TLC, kind of a fixer up or. And the listing description, the remarks made it sound like it was just an awesome property, you know, the Taj yeah. Mahal. Maybe it was. <laughs> yeah, and I and I commented on it, and I it was on Facebook in our group, and I said something like, "Spencer, like that, that's quite the write up, man. Like you really yeah. made that place sound awesome." And he goes, "Chat GPT, baby." And I'm like, <laughs> "Wait, why?" And this was this was like a while ago when Chat yeah. GPT was really just kind of first coming out. And again, Spencer, he's he's smart, he's on it. But I was like, "Chat GPT, what is Chat GPT? Whatever." And he wasn't kidding. I thought he was messing around, but he actually used Chat GPT yeah. to write up some listing remarks, and we're seeing that. So I never use it to like write anything, like just write it, write it. But definitely, it's it's good for inspiration. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, and the stuff that you can do with Chat GPT now is is insane. Um, it, it, it's crazy. I mean, you can literally tell it to, um, like, based off. You know, th- th- here's an address to a house, and blah, blah, write me a description. You know, the house has this, this, and this. Write me a description. Okay, based off these features and this, the the features nearby in the area. Write me a Spotify list for my playlist of people of music that those type of buyers would like. Wow. And like, um, tell me what type of theme. Like, you you can mm-hmm. put details in it, and you can you can set the settings up to like tell you, you know, so that ChatGPT automatically assumes that you're. <laughs> You can get into your settings. I'm not. I don't use it enough to know, but you can. You can set it up to be. I'm a luxury real estate broker in Lafayette, Indiana, and so it automatically assumes every time question you ask that you're a lo- luxury real estate broker in Indiana. So I, I mean, the the stuff that you can do is is crazy. Um, it, it's going to get better or worse depending on how you look at it as, right. it as it goes. I mean, I think it changes mm-hmm. daily. Yeah. For sure. 
Nelson, you might be able to chime in a little bit on that. Yeah, stuff. so I've, I've recently started using it in a different way where it's tied to it. It's called Dolly 3. It's, it's AI, but it's more of graphics, like photos. Um, so I needed a photo for a clothing line, but I needed some models. So I told Chat GPT create a photorealistic image of people wearing a blank T-shirt, and you'd be amazed at what it produced. And, and it looks yeah. super it looks real. Photorealistic. It's a yeah. photo. Yeah. You'd really have to analyze it to know that hey, this is. But all these are they're AI. fake <laughs> fake people that don't exist in exactly. the world. Was this for our Christmas shirts or something else? It or? was something else. Okay. I'll show you. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's wild. Yeah, it's the way of the world now, and all that stuff is is beyond me. But um, it, it is it is pretty cool. The it, tools. It's know. it's changing. AI and ChatGPT and programs like it are going are are changing so rapidly, and are changing so much about our industry and lots of other industries that if you're not paying attention to it, you're, you're at, at least some, then you're you're going to lose the game in the long run. Mm -hmm. I look forward to when I don't have to do anything. ChatGPT, go show this house for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Well, I, I think with that, we're going to start wrapping it up here. This is Real Estate Co-Pilot. I'm your co-pilot, Josh Shives. Nelson Pelton. Grant Thompson, thanks for having me on. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was fun, fun, guys. Yes. So thank you very much for listening. We'll, uh, we'll hope to hear from you soon.